Richard Antonucci holds just a one-point lead as the Firestone Nitty Light Series heads to the short track at Iowa. High speeds and high banks are the norm as the future stars of IndyCar go wheel-to-wheel -wheel at Iowa Speedway. The Iowa 100 is next. Five ten-thousandths of a second. Three wide in the world. Wheel-to-wheel all the way through the corner. The drag race to the finish, it is dead even. The seventh race of the 2008 Firestone Indy Light Series brings us to Iowa Speedway. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Robbie Buell. This is a seven-eighths of a mile oval. Now, we were at Indianapolis a couple of races ago, two and a half miles. Last week, the flat track at Milwaukee. Now, this high bank super speedway, which is really a mini super speedway. What problems mentally and physically does this present? It does. It has a physical aspect and a mental aspect for these drivers. Seven-eighths of a mile, as you said, they're doing 115 laps around here. That's more laps than any track these guys run at. You're always turning around this racetrack. There's no time to catch your breath. And these guys are pulling close to three and a half Gs every time they go into the corner. That's a big physical load. The mental aspect of this track, you can't make any mistakes. You have to, you have to hit your marks lap after lap. And physically, if you start breaking down, that's when the mental mistakes come. A tough racetrack. Mike King is standing by with the pole sitter for today's race. For the fourth time in his Firestone Indy Lights career, this guy is going to lead the field at the green flag. This is Ari Leyendijk Jr. Ari, it's been a while since uh, you've been on the inside of row one. You looking forward to the start of this one? Definitely. A lot of front row starts. You know, not many poles, but hopefully we can convert this one into a win. Um, the car's been strong all weekend. It's been really strong on the bottom of the racetrack, so we'll see what we can do on 115 laps. You know, I think the biggest key to this race is going to be traffic and restarts, so try to concentrate on those two things and hopefully pull one off. You're driving the Targus AFS Andretti green car. I've had so many people say, what is Targus? They want to know. Now, Targus is a fly fishing company. You know, they came on uh, on board for Indy and for the rest of the season, so it's been really great to having them on board. It's the support we needed to get through the season. It's enabled us to test more, and uh, that's been the key to this poll. All right, good luck today. Thanks. That's Ari Leyendike Jr. Bob looking for career win number one in the Firestone Indy Light Series. Firestone Indy Lights on ESPN2 is brought to you by Firestone. With a tradition of innovation that spans over 100 years, Firestone is the first name in Indy racing. 22 cars getting lined up behind the pace car, ready to go in this... 100-mile race, 115 laps at the top of your screen. You can see the starting lineup as Arvid Leyendijk and Dylan Battistini will occupy row number one. And Jeff Simmons and Bobby Wilson will be back in row number two. And, Robbie, how about the keys to this race? Well, the first key here is making the pass, being patient, being persistent, waiting for the opportunity to get by that guy in front of you. It's a very, very difficult racetrack to pass on, and staying on the bottom is going to be important for that. The next one is managing the Firestone tires. What I mean by that is a key is to be on the bottom of this racetrack, but sometimes to stay at the bottom, you're going to use that right front tire, so you have to manage that. The next is traffic. Traffic can play a big role in the last 20 laps of this race as everybody's kind of positioned themselves to make those moves. Only six drivers that were in last year's race are starting in this year's race. Robbie Pecorari finished fifth in last year's race and will start in 11th position here this year. You can see the banking from 12 to 14 degrees. It's a progressive banking and does lead to some side-by-side -side competition. One more lap to go. We'll get the green flag. There's Anna Beatrice, car number 20, rolling in beside her the 25 car of J.R. Hildebrand. Cindy Ottoman had some problems uh, on pit lane. We'll bring you more on that in just a moment. As the field now begins to line up nicely for the start of the race. Ari Leyendijk Jr. on pole, the two-time winner in 2008. Dylan Battistini is alongside. That's Frank Pereira there in the number 55 car as he has his first Firestone in the light start. The green flag is out, and here we go. And Lion Dyke jumps off into the lead as Ballas Battistini jumps in behind him. Side by side racing through the pack. Looks like everybody's going to make it through turns one and two. Bobby Wilson there in the fourth spot. Beatrice fifth. 
And there's Matos, Ari's teammate, right there in the AFS red and yellow car. That was Sherman looking down the inside. So, so right now, everybody's doing a pretty good job of, you know, giving each other some distance, realizing we've got 150 laps around here, don't want to do anything stupid early on. Still getting the tires up to temperature, up to pressure, figuring out what they got. That's Brent Sherman down there in the number 16 car, driving for Panther Racing. His teammate is Battistini. Yeah, and Brent, Brent's got a bunch of racing experience. He spent a lot of time in big, heavier cars, and he knows how to manage his cars. He's the one guy to look for at the end of this race, right there in the National Guard car. Ari Leondike Jr. continues to lead this race. Here's Battistini looking to the outside going into turn one, but unable to make the pass. In fact, drops back just a little bit, and Battistini appears to be running a much higher line than Leondike, at least here in the early going. Yeah, he, you know, Dylan right now, I think was playing around, all of a sudden, he, he came across the back side of Ari's car, and I think took the air off his car, and kind of surprised him. Right now, that's not going to hurt him. Mean, a lot of racing left to settle into his routine. You know, we talked about making the pass. Oh, Cindy, unfortunately. We she mentioned that uh, she had trouble getting away from the starting line, and now she has spun here on the front stretch. So Cindy Oliven brings out the first caution of this race on lap number five, and it would appear as if she is going to be able to get going once again. Here's a replay. Okay, coming off of turn four. Car just gets loose as she's putting the power down coming off of turn four. She does a good job of keeping it off the outside wall. Um, through the grass, doesn't get into anything. No contact, and Alban is back on the racetrack. Lyondike, Battistini, and Simmons, your top three. Back at Iowa Speedway, and we are about to go back to racing after our first caution of the event caused by Cindy Oliman spinning off corner number four, but not hitting anything. And as the green comes out, Lyondike has a quite a bit of jump on the rest of the field. And now maybe the battle for second here is Jeff Simmons in that yellow and white car. Comes up on Battistini, and by the same token, Bobby Wilson there in the blue car running a very close fourth. Yeah, top five all pretty clean here. We heard Ari say at the top of the show, you know, the key for him was one of them was restarts. And if uh, that's any indication of the way he's going to kind of restarts as the day goes along, he's, he's on a good plan. It's hard to believe that Ari Leondike Jr. has not yet won in this series. This is probably the best chance he has of doing that in a long, long time. It's his first poll since 2003, and it would be quite a day if Ari Leondike Jr. could walk off of his very first victory here in this series. Again, this is the time in the race. You know, we're about 10 laps into this right now. Everybody's got a good feel of what kind of car they have, where it's strong, where it's weak. Now they just got to settle into a rhythm. You have sway bars on board that can adjust the balance on the race car. You have a weight jacker that can make the car have a little more push or a little bit more loose. And those are all tools that the drivers can use to manage the tires as one. We're just having a, a comfortably well-balanced race car. J.R. Hildebrand is in number 25, Red Sherman in 16, and that yellow and white car behind Sherman is Pablo Donoso. This is the battle for 7th and 8th position. Hildebrand running 7th and Red Sherman running in 8th spot. Hildebrand driving for uh, Ray Hall Anderson Racing. He's been real stout on, on the old, uh, you know, one at Kansas City at, at uh, the Freedom 100 this year. He had a real strong car working his way up through there. So again, as we get into this race, he's another guy we want to keep our eye on. All of his finishes this year have been in the top 10, except for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where he finished in 24th position. But he was 10th at Homestead, Miami. He was 5th at St. Petersburg, 2nd in the second race at St. Petersburg, 5th at Milwaukee, and as you indicated, he won in Kansas. And we're watching those two guys, Hildebrand and Sherman, they were going nose to tail. Here, here we got Pablo Donoso with a run on the high side. You know, we say making the pass here, that's one of the keys. And why that's a key and why you need to be patient because there we'll see Pablo Donoso on the high side of the racetrack. That's great, he's up there in clean air, but it's very difficult around this track to get the pass done on there, you're running a longer distance. So you have to really pressure the guy in front of you and somehow get on the inside of him because the odds of you getting the pass done on the high side of the ring track on the outside of that guy, it's, uh, it's probably not gonna happen. That was Robbie Pecorari in the number 43 car that took the spot away from Donoso, 
Pecorari moving up to the ninth position. Pecorari in that white car. There once again, Hildebrand and Sherman as they run seventh and eighth. Dyke still at the front of the field, but Dylan Battistini has not let him get away. It's only a difference of about six or eight car lengths. Battistini, you know, he's a two race, two race winner so far this year. So, uh, you know, odds on, he's he's not the guy that Ari wants to be seeing in his beers. Well, Dylan Battistini has already made a big impact in the Firestone Indy Light Series. The British native has raced all over the world, but he's found a home here in the United States. I started at a very young age. I was nine years old when I started in kart racing. I used to race in the British Championship against a few guys that are doing really well now. Daniel Weldon and Justin Wilson was there as well. I did two years in Asian Formula 3, which was a, a fantastic experience. It was a bit of a culture shock going to places like Indonesia and China. Yeah, I did see a few strange things. I had a giant monitor lizard run out of the track in front of me once and I had to swerve at about 140 miles an hour to avoid that. And then sometimes you get local tribes wandering around and peering over the fence at the side of the track and walking along the edges of the circuit. An impressive drive in his first global race, Dylan Battis TV wins from Panther Racing. I was as surprised as anyone else when I won the very first race, I have to be honest, especially on an oval. It just came to me really quickly, it came to me naturally and I need to keep the momentum going. I'm here to win the championship, and uh, it's pretty clear that I've got a fairly good chance because of the way that I've started, so uh, I need to just keep my head down, keep working hard, learn as much as possible, try not to make any mistakes on the track, and uh, hopefully I'll be there with a chance right to the end of the championship. is one of the owners of Panther Racing and Mike we're watching Dylan Battistini run second right now he started uh, second on the outside of the front row just taking his time being patient I'm assuming well he's, he's pretty comfortable with the car uh, on that first yellow he and Pancho were talking about whether or not he should try for the lead and he just said well it's up to you Dylan you do whatever you want to do you're driving the car you might be smarter to stay behind him and not burn the tires off of it just draft for a while and see what he's got Bob, right now, it looks like Dylan Battistini has decided he's going to push the button. He's battling for the lead. Under caution once again, but just about to go back to green uh, for the second time. This is Travis Gregg, who had a problem in the same area of the track that Cindy did. Yeah, exact same thing. Just the rear of the car stepped out. Again, did a good job of keeping it off the outside of the wall. Spinning through the infield, got a lot of grass in there. I'm sure he's had to come in. Yeah, there he is, changing some tires, pulling the grass out of the rads. And uh, here we are, back to the restart. Let's see what Ari's got. Green flag comes out on lap number 47. Dylan Battistini is second, followed by Simmons, Wilson, and Matos. And Dylan had nothing for Ari on that restart. I mean, restarts are definitely a time to, to take advantage of things, opportunity, shake it up, and uh, nothing for, for the lead group on that. Back here's another, another story. Look at Sherman looking on the outside of Via there in the green and white car. Look at Bobby Wilson. Is he going to go all the way down? He had the another car. <laughs> he was thinking, I'm going to get some momentum. I'm going to go down the inside. He thought better of it. Now, this is where traffic, there's Cindy Allman up there. So these guys are laughing. Look at Matos. Wow. He's got to get to the inside. Oh, oh, oh look, look at Simmons. Did you see Simmons? That was Oh, no, that was Donoso. Donoso. Yeah. Just, woo, man. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but, but they're all still on the track. <laughs> Everybody so. made it somehow. Wow. Unbelievable. Well, there's Matos and Bia now as they run sixth and seventh. Up ahead is Sherman and Bobby Wilson. And behind them is J.R. Hildebrand. There's Donoso and Pecorari in the 43. And looking down the inside, that's Frank Pereira. He's on the inside, and that's the advantage. You want to get the inside lane. That's the shortest distance around here. Can he make it stick? He doesn't quite have it yet. He's still there. Keep working on him, Frank. Keep working. Not going to get it done. Pereira began the year in the IndyCar Series, driver for Conquest Racing, but now is in the Firestone Indy Lights. Lion by Bleeds of Iowa. 
Bob Jenkins, Robbie Buell, and Mike King back at Iowa Speedway for the Firestone Indy Lights race, which has been led since the drop of the green flag by Ari Leinbeck Jr. So only one leader to show you on our Firestone lap leader chart. But his advantage over Dylan Battistini has never been more than about a half second. And right now, last time around, we'll check it right here and tell you what it is. Officially, it is 0.3, 0.4. Second, so less than a half second separate first and second. But those guys now have a three second advantage on third, fourth, and fifth right here. Simmons, Anna Beatrice, and Brent Sherman. Real good battle. We haven't seen that much of Jeff Simmons, but it looks like his car, he's fighting a little bit more the way you see Bia just looking inside and outside. So Jeff there in the yellow boy car, he's fighting some hand. He's definitely got some issues. And behind that group of cars, we've got another group, Bobby Wilson, Pablo Donoso, and Rafael Matos. Now, we understand from Mike King down on pit lane that Bobby Wilson's car has developed a push. He was running up in the fourth position, but has now dropped back to sixth. Yeah, and that's, you know, when the car's pushing through the corners and it's pushing up the track, you got to get out of the gas sometimes. You know, if it's pushing up towards the wall, you just can't add steering. you got to give up a little bit of throttle. And as a result, just lets everybody close up a little bit behind him. He does have ways to adjust that somewhat on, on board with sway bars and weight jack. We talked about earlier. Here's the run. Donoso's got to run. Can he get down on the inside? He's there. He should be able to make that stick. Yeah, just as I say, he comes <laughs> behind him. But that's definitely what you want to do, is try and get a good run, and get on the inside of that car. It's a shorter distance run. But two, to get down on the bottom of the racetrack, you're going to use the car up. And here's, look at this battle here between Brent and, uh, <laughs> there's Denoso as we speak, diving down Bobby Wilson. Oh, oh slides up a little bit. He's still got to finish the pass. Wilson's got a strong car and a straight yep. line. Look at that. And maybe he has been able to work some of that push out because he isn't dropping back like he did there at one time when he lost two quick positions. Yeah, you know, as competitive as this racetrack is, I mean, you're really only talking four tenths of a second that separates the better far of the field lap after lap. So it doesn't take but just one hiccup, you know, just a little, just one small thing, and that gives somebody behind you an opportunity. Well, next up for the Firestone Indy Light Series is a return to historic Watkins Glen International. Three former winners will lead the field on one of the most challenging road courses on the schedule. The Watkins Glen Twin 100s from beautiful upstate New York airs on ESPN2 July 10th at 2 o'clock Eastern. While we were away, we did have another caution, and this one involves some rather serious wall contact. Johnny Reed here in the front stretch. Yeah, coming off of turn four, just the rear comes around, slaps the left side of the, the car, takes off the left front, damages uh, the left rear, kind of comes to a, a finish right here, right start finish line. And before that, we had a pass for the lead as Lyondike got bottled up in traffic. There he is, Lyondike. There you see him. He had to get out of the gas. There's the run. There's Battistini going to get by him. And we've heard from Ari. Remember, he said the toughest two things here are going to be traffic and restarts. Well, now he's lost the lead. This is an opportunity <laughs> for him on the restart. There are going to be three laps to go. The green will come out when they cross the line. And let's see who wins. Will Dylan Battistini become a three-race winner this year? Year, or will Ari Leyendijk Jr. win his very first race ever in his 53rd start? And we will not get a start. Everybody has to check up here and avoid running into the person ahead of him. Yeah, that was a good that was a good job. Just got rid of all the kitty litter out there. Right. That absorbed all the fluids from there. So that's all. That now, now they can get busy and get racing. But now we'll just have two laps to go. So if Lion Dyke is going to do it, he's going to have to yeah. do it in quick fashion. And it's not just what's going to happen up there between Battistini and Lion Dyke. I mean, we got Matos, Wilson, Bia, Sherman, all of those guys have been fighting, you know, for that third back through sixth spot pretty hard. There are two lap cars between what's going on here. I thought we were going to get the restart, and we will not as the yellow remains out. Well, now if we get the green, we'll just have one lap to go. Wow. They will get the green this time by. Wow. There are two lap cars between the second place car of Lyondike and third place car 
of Anna Beatrice. Brent Sherman is fourth in Wilson, Matos, Donoso, Simmons, Hildebrand, and Williams, the top ten. Yeah, and we've seen Donoso be pretty aggressive uh, all race long, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. Here they come. Here they start accelerating off a of four. What does uh, our got? Yeah, he's got a good jump. Dylan Battistini gets a good jump on the restart. The white and the green flags come out. So this is the last lap. And if you're going to make up a position, you better do it now. That's Matos down on the bottom. And Wiggle we're, big time. And Sherman had the run, but he got checked up by a slower car. There he went backwards. Matos went backwards. Looks like Battistini has got it in the bag. Dylan Battistini wins at Iowa. And a crash here on the last lap as Bobby Wilson gets turned around and slaps the safer barrier. Woo. Well, he was running at the top 10, but unfortunately will not have a very good result because he got into the wall. So Dylan Battistini wins his third race of 2008. We'll begin to talk with him in a moment. Well, here are the unofficial results of this race here at Iowa. Battistini, Lyondike, Beatrice, Sherman, and Donoso are your top five with Simmons, Matos, Hildebrand, Antonucci, and Williams completing the top ten. Here's our Firestone victory lane and Mike King. Well, for the third time this season, Dylan Battistini sits in victory lane as Panther Racing. They're literally trying to unhook him now. So Dylan Battistini has won here. What a race for this young man from England. As here he comes, Dylan Battistini coming out of the race car and what has become now his traditional celebration standing on the tub. We're going to move in here and get a, a quick word with Dylan. Dylan, congratulations. For the third time, we welcome you to Victory Lane. Patiently, you waited for 100 laps and then you finally had your opportunity. Yeah, what an amazing race. I mean, uh, I can't believe that. I'm so happy. That just feels so good. Three wins. And... Uh, Wow. <laughs> Dylan, you're going to go to Watkins Glen in a couple of weeks with the points lead. You're up by 27, so uh, quite a run for you. Yeah, I'm definitely on a good run. Um, wow, I just really enjoyed that race. I mean, I stayed really close to Ari, and I realized that it wasn't going to work. I had to drop back a bit and wait for my chance to get a run up when he got stalled by the back markers. And uh, luckily, my, uh, my chance came, and I was, I was in the right position to make, make the most of it. And... Uh, I feel a bit sorry for him because it would have been his first win and, and uh, he led most of the laps, obviously, but, but uh, I had to take the chance when it came. <laughs> Dylan, congratulations. So he's back in victory lane for the third time. Bob, when he showed up at Homestead Miami Speedway with Panther Racing, no one knew who this young man was. Well, he's quit changing that in a hurry. Dylan Battistini back in victory lane in the Firestone Indy Light Series. Wow, he has definitely been the surprise as far as I'm concerned of this 2008 Firestone Indy Light Series, winning his third race of the year here at Iowa Speedway. Well, thanks for joining us for this event. Once again, Watkins Glen will be our next race. You can see it here on ESPN2, July 10th at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Dylan Battistini wins over Lyondike and a Beatrice Sherman and Donoso here at Iowa. Thanks for joining us for Mike King and Robbie Buell. I'm Bob Jenkins. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.